You don't do the things that you need to do because you are afraid you will mess up. You're afraid that you're gonna break it, that you'll do it wrong. You're afraid you're gonna ruin everything. You're afraid that you will try and you'll come along and look like you don't know what you're doing. You don't do the things that you need to do because you are afraid. And that keeps you right here, standing still, doing nothing. Your fear keeps you standing still. And standing still is death. That's why I would rather you do something right now and completely mess it up than to wait and to wait and to wait and to never start and to never grow and to never progress. I would rather you try and risk failing and maybe mess up or maybe, just maybe, you're gonna pull this off then live your life stuck, feeling stuck, standing still, being afraid, never moving forward. Because overthinking, the fear of failure, the perfectionist inside of you, it's killing your growth. This happens to me. And honestly, I think it happens to all of us. When we come up with a new idea, when we try something new, when something is outside of our comfort zone, what is the first thing you do? Maybe you do a little bit of research. Maybe you go for a walk and think about it. Maybe you call up a friend or a mentor and you talk it out with them. You come up with the idea and the first thing you do is stop, right? Take a step back and slow things down. Why is that? Well, somewhere along the way, you were taught to think things through. That is very grown up and responsible thing to do, isn't it? You were taught that you need to stop and think about things because you can't just do everything that pops in your head. You can't just say every little thing that comes to mind. You have to stop and you have to think things through, right? Just because you have an idea doesn't mean it'll work, doesn't mean that it's good, doesn't mean you should say it, doesn't mean you should do it, right? That's what you were taught. Think about kids. Think about when you were a kid. I have four of them. Let me tell you, they come up with some crazy ideas. Like we have a tree in our backyard. And this tree has super long branches. And so our kids like to grab the branches. And at first they started treating them like Tarzan swings. And so they would grab the branch and they would swing like crazy. And I thought, gosh, that branch is gonna break, but it didn't. And then the kids thought, hmm, we have this little hill. What if they climb the hill with the branch and then they swing off the hill? And then they thought, hmm, we have a trampoline. What if they pull the trampoline near and they can swing off the hill and land on the trampoline? You see where I'm going with this? It ends with them swinging and them jumping and them flipping and things just get crazier and crazier until someone gets hurt. That's what it's like being a kid, to keep going, to keep trying, to keep asking what if until you find your limits. But kids don't find their limits by thinking things through or scheduling things or talking things out or planning, right? Kids don't think things through that way. They find their limits by doing it until it hurts. And as adults, as grownups, we're taught that is a completely irresponsible way to live your life. And so you find yourself as a grownup, as a responsible person, thinking of this new thing, of this new thing you want to accomplish, of this new thing you want to attack, of this thing that you're dreaming of. You're thinking of this new thing, doing something outside of your comfort zone. So what do you do? What do you do? You act like a grownup when you should be acting more like a kid. Stop stopping. Stop overthinking everything. Stop wasting time talking yourself out of the ideas and the dreams that you have up here in your head. Thinking is not doing. Planning is not doing. Scheduling and toying with things and getting your courage up and talking to people about it. None of those things are actually doing anything. John Maxwell is a leadership expert that you may know, and he has a saying that I really like. The saying is consistency compounds. Consistency compounds. What he's saying is anything you do consistently will grow exponentially. Consistency compounds. It's growth upon growth upon growth. So how can you get that growth upon growth upon growth if you're not being consistent? Ask yourself that. How can you get any growth? How can you move forward at all if you're starting and you're stopping, if you're planning and you're thinking, if you're never actually seeing things through. Think about it. How can you get that exponential growth if you're not 
being consistent. You can't. You know you can't. That's why you're still watching this. So then the question becomes, what can you do? Well, let's make this tactical. It's one thing to talk about things or think about things. It's another thing to actually do them, right? That's what this whole topic is about. First, just come to terms with the fact that you can't learn about things you don't care about. You can't be so-so on things. You can't have a vague interest in whatever it is you wanna do. You have to care. You have to be invested. You have to be excited. You have to want it. Because if you don't really care about this, you're gonna talk yourself out of it. The risk will be too high. The work will be too much. The pain will be too great. You will talk yourself out of this as soon as you hit the first challenge, if it's not something that you really care about. It just won't be worth the sacrifice to you. And so you ask yourself, do I really care about this? And if you do, awesome, you win. If that caring will carry you through. You win the first question. And if you don't, if you don't really care about it, then let it go. Don't judge yourself for not caring about it. Don't beat yourself up. You know, I should care about it more. It's the type of thing I should care about. Why don't I care about it? Don't judge yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Just come to terms with the fact you don't really care about this that much. And then focus your energy and your efforts on the things that you do care about. Next, you can't learn without doing. You can't learn how to drive sitting in a classroom. I mean, not really, right? You can know the accelerator, you can know the brake, you can know the steering wheel, you can know all the mechanics of it, but you don't know the feeling. You don't know if you're good, if you're bad, if you're gonna hit a curb, if you're gonna hit a car, if you're gonna get scared. You don't know anything until you're actually sitting behind the wheel and driving. You can't learn your way by thinking through things, not really. The way you learn is by doing it, by assessing how it went, by correcting the things that you wanna do better, and then you just try it again. Doing, assessing, correcting, and then trying again. And that brings us to the third point. You can't learn without taking on risk. Now, whenever you're doing a new thing, the risk might feel really big or it might feel really small, but you can't learn while you're cocooned in a safe bubble. When a baby is learning how to walk, they're gonna fall down. When someone's learning how to snowboard, you're gonna end the day with your butt really hurting because you hit the ground a lot of times. When you are learning how to get into sales, you're gonna walk out of a lot of meetings, beating yourself up, questioning, why the hell did I say that? Oh my goodness, next time I'm not gonna say that. There's always a risk of getting hurt, of making a mistake, of messing up. You're going to make mistakes. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be terrible. You're not gonna feel very good about it. But here's the silver lining. There's always room to make bigger mistakes in the future, right? There's always room for things to get worse, to make bigger mistakes. But you actually learn more from the mistakes than you learn from the wins. We learn through the pain. We learn through the mistakes. We learn by things getting so bad or being so painful, the next time a little red flag goes off in our minds and we go, gosh, last time it was terrible. I don't wanna do that again. Ah, I see that we're about to go down this path. I don't wanna make that mistake again. I never want that to happen to me again. We learn from that, but the wins we forget. The wins fade away. The wins aren't something that really teaches us anything. It kind of comes a little too easily sometimes. And with all the wins and all the losses and all the pain, the one thing I want you to remember is that nothing is really as bad as it is in your head. Not really. Most of the time we think about all these things going wrong and we work through them when they do. And, and out of everything that could go wrong, usually you get blindsided by something you never saw coming. You could never have expected. You would never have thought that we'd spend all these months in lockdown, right? The things that surprise you, the things that catch you off guard, the mistakes that actually happen are typically the things that aren't we're not even worrying about up here in our head. And so don't allow your imagination, your anxiety, your worry to carry you away and keep you from ever starting in the first place. In truth, there is a time and a place for thinking, for planning, for scheduling, for all of those things. It's when you're good at something and you wanna get great at something. It's when you're looking to establish process, when you're looking to level up, when you're looking to find efficiencies. There is a, a, a time and a place to make sure that everything is buttoned down and everything is thought through and everything is scheduled and everything is just running like a well-oiled machine. But it's not 
when you're starting something. It's not when you're getting over the fear of failure because all of that planning and all of that thinking and all that process building and everything else will feel like busy work and it will keep you from the real work of starting and doing and learning and growing and everything else that you need to do to be able to start hitting your goals. And so you are not making the progress that you wanna make. You're feeling stuck because you are not starting. You're standing still and standing still is death. Movement is the answer. Move now and move always. That's how you grow. That's how you turn yourself into the person that you're meant to be. So there you have it. Until next time, remember you have to think big. You've got to be bold and you must say yes. If you want to know why we all have something to prove, check out this video right here. I think you'd like it a lot and I will see you over there.